Welcome to St. Edward's Church as we celebrate the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Would you kindly take a moment to ensure all cell phones are turned off? As we gather, let us rest our minds and give to God all of our concerns, hopes, and thanksgiving as we prepare to receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist and into our hearts and into our lives. Would you kindly stand as we welcome our presider, Father Dave Warren. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, good afternoon and welcome to our Sunday celebration. Today's gospel gives us the very consoling words of Jesus. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest beginning of our celebration this afternoon, let us lay down our burdens before the Lord, the burdens of our cares and concerns, the burden of our sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. On this day, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ to new life and our own resurrection. Let us give praise and thanks to God as we say together, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, Fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. 
Thus says the Lord, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the warrior's bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. I will will bless bless your your name name forever, forever, my my King King and my God. God. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. I will will bless bless your your name name forever, forever, my my King King and my God. God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will will bless bless your name name forever, forever, my my King King and my my God. God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live according to the flesh, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dave, may the Lord be in your heart and on your lips. You may proclaim his holy gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. He continued, all things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying a heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters. It is so good to be able to see all of you again, and I long for that time, as I'm sure you do, where we don't have to wave across the church at our friends and that we can meet in the lobbies and say hello when you're coming or goodbye when you're leaving. Hopefully those times will be here with us soon. Our gospel today is so appropriate for what we have been going through, which has placed burdens on all of us, on our friends and on our families, on our co-workers, and yes, even those who cause us grief from time to time. Matthew's gospel gives us a message of hope. May the meek and humble heart of Jesus lighten our burdens for his yoke is easy and the burden light. What do these words tell us about the Lord? What do they mean for us and for others? Before a deacon is ordained, we must spend time in a pastoral setting. It could be a hospital, it could be a shelter, it could be home for those with special needs. And we are there to provide a presence, to provide comfort, to listen. I was assigned to North York General Hospital for a six month period to visit patients of all faiths and cultures. One afternoon as I was finishing up my shift, I received a note that there was a a lady that I was to see. Their daughter, her daughter was very worried about her and wanted someone to go and see her. Upon entering her room, she was in a private room. It was very dark. The curtains were drawn and there was just a single light over her bed. I asked if it was okay to come in and her response was, if you must. And upon introducing myself, she asked what church I was from. I told her my church, and she said, Oh God, a Catholic. <laughs> Not a very promising start. <laughs> However, a quiet prayer to the Holy Spirit helped me to continue. Seeing a writer's digest on the table beside her bed, I asked her what story she was reading. She told me she could not read anymore because she had too many shakes. It was too hard for her to read. And then she stated, I want to die. My response to that was, I'm not familiar with that feeling. Please tell me more. She told me she wanted to die because she could no longer look after herself. It did not want to be a burden to her family and those that looked after her. How terrible it must feel when we are at a loss, when we're overwhelmed, when we feel that we are a burden and we have to ask ourselves, who do we turn to? Who do we turn to to lighten our burdens? We can turn to Jesus, our Lord who listens to us when we call on him, who shows mercy and compassion when we are in despair, who gives strength when we are tired. For we, like his disciples, are the infants that Jesus wants to lessen the burdens for in his gentle way of love. Jesus came to us as we heard in the first reading from the prophet who prophesied, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will save us. His dominion shall be from sea to sea. And what was Jesus' way? Jesus was meek towards the people in a way very much different than the Pharisees who laid burden upon burden upon the people. He came to free all from the heaviest of their burdens by taking them upon himself, by sharing his yoke and lessening the load. Throughout the gospels, we heard many examples of his concern and his mercy. He raised the dead, cures the blind, frees those possessed by evil, cures those with leprosy. Even at the moment of his own death, he shows his concern for the people around him. He gives himself up to death 
lovingly. So we must imitate our Lord, not only by not causing unnecessary worries for others, but by helping people to bear their worries that they already have. We should never think that any act offered for the good of another is more than we should do. These acts should lead to us looking for opportunities to make ourselves useful, of lightening the burdens for others, and giving joy to all those who are able to help in any way possible. Even though we know that we will never do as much as we should, like Jesus, we should be meek. Jesus is also humble of heart. A proud person sees the universe revolving around him or her. If there is an offense, the proud person refuses to forgive. Who does he think he is? The proud person acts. He or she is not concerned with offering peace, but rather hanging on to hate. And this is not the way of the Lord. His concern is not with how he was offended. His concern is with the sinner and returning him or her to love. This is the mercy of God streaming from Jesus' heart. And what does that mean to all of us? It means that we need to give Jesus our burdens. And this is more than just the difficulties of life, sickness, marriage, financial. Whatever family problems we have, yes, we give those to the Lord. But he wants us to give him more. He wants all of that that is keeping us from him. Perhaps we have hidden actions that we are ashamed of. Perhaps we have difficulty forgiving those who have hurt us. Often we are afraid that God is never going to forgive us. We have attacked him willingly and knowingly. How can we seek forgiveness? No, the Lord says, give me your burdens. Come to me, for I am meek and humble of heart. He is saying to us, I am not so offended that I am shutting off my mercy and compassion. I am not concerned about myself. I am concerned about you. I suffered on the cross for you. Give me your burdens. I want them, no matter how ugly, how messy they may be. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. As we continue with Mass, let us remember these words and reflect on them. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. God bless you and your families. Let us now renew our faith in the God who carries our burdens. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With trust in God's goodness and mercy, we now present to him our petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all church leaders and government officials, as they serve the people of God in this time of great need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our parish and beyond, may God strengthen our hope and provide us comfort, strength, and consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of racism and violence, we pray for healing and reconciliation as we strive to reflect the loving face of Jesus to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for Father John Sutka and all who were ordained to the priesthood last weekend. May God bless them and grant them grace and courage in their ministry to the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the 50th anniversary of Robert and Gloria McLaren and the 87th birthday of Lailonda Pascal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all impacted by COVID-19 outbreak for the health and safety of doctors, medical professionals, first responders, and all in the service industry who assist in the greater community. As well, we pray for those working to secure an effective vaccine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Victor Williams, Connie Choi, Antonio Joshua, Mahinda Markaville, Patty Callan, Dorothy and Jerry Masakoti, Josie Hebedich, Liz Clark, Minnie Guzzi, Sister Joanne de Anagosto of the Loretto Sisters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Carol Saunders, Greg Donahue, August Lurch, Amelia Stupak, Tadizuk Kizonotsky, Yvonne Sterneno, Antoinette M. Cross, Angela Martino, Alvaro Roma Silva, Esna Berardi, and all who have died as a result of the COVID-19 virus. May God receive them into his eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Mass intentions for this weekend. Marie Claire McDermott, Purification Perdot, Kenneth Wong. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in the silence of our hearts, our own intentions. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we do not know how to pray as we ought. Would you give us your spirit who prays within us and who expresses our petitions in a language you can understand? We ask you, Lord, to accept the prayers we have voiced this afternoon, as well as those prayers which are too hard for us to put into words. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me, O Lord, from my sin. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that your sacrifice and mine might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our contact, conduct closer to the light of heaven. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Be proclaimed your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edward the Confessor, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. 
there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us show each other a sign of this peace. The Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I just want to um, thank you for taking the time to come to church uh, today uh, to be with us in the celebration of, uh, of the Eucharist. And uh, it's good to see you all. And, um, and thank you for your patience uh, with all of the guidelines we uh, have to go through for this. Uh, but it obviously, it's for everybody's safety. And, uh, and, uh, and, and I think we're, we're doing fairly well considering all the churches that are open now. Um, I want to thank in a particular way our volunteers, those who greeted you, those who showed you to your, your pew, and, uh, and those who will be staying after to help sanitize the, the, uh, the pews. Uh, so wonderful volunteers at all the masses we have. And if you would like to help in any way, just let us know. We'll be happy that might give them a bit of a break from time to time too. I just want to m uh, mention that, as you know, Tuesday coming, the Toronto a new Toronto bylaw takes effect in which it requires mandatory wearing of masks in all public places, including churches, uh, places of worship. So we just, obviously you've all got your masks on, so 
uh, it may not uh, be as relevant to you, but to those who um, uh, obviously might be challenged by that, we just have to follow the, uh, the guideline uh, of the Toronto bylaw. The Cardinal has also asked us to, to try to make sure that that happens too. So, um, but you're all doing well. So uh, we, we, I thank you for that and we're keeping in mind everyone's safety. Tomorrow we have a very special, special event uh, and I know you're here today, but tomorrow uh, our former seminarian is now a priest, Father John. He was one of the eight uh, uh, ordinandi uh, last Saturday at the cathedral. And um, he'll be here tomorrow at 11 to celebrate uh, a mass of Thanksgiving. And following that, he's going to stay. We're going to have a second mass at one o'clock. And so uh, we look forward to uh, his celebrating. He's very excited about coming back here where he served for a year. And, uh, and I can tell you, he's very much at peace. He looks wonderful. And, um, and we're looking forward. His father will be joining him, his father Mike, who had been very ill even when he was uh, when John was here, and Mike is doing much better, and we we're very grateful. I was very happy that Mike could see uh, his son ordained. Uh, when you're leaving today, uh, you may leave by any of the doors, so uh, because there's not another mass coming, obviously, so uh, you can leave by the doors, but if you do leave through these, uh, just note that some people have asked about where they put their collection, because we don't take up the collection during masses, you know, but there are baskets at each entrance and at the back, too. And uh, finally, uh, Father Dave, did you happen to announce your Bible study? No, okay, Father Dave is going to um, start a new Bible study, uh, and I'll let him say a few words of that because I can't remember if it's gonna be on Wednesday, Monday or Wednesday, but Father Dave will, will do that. And thank you to Bill Malefka for uh, taping this Mass. He'll also uh, tape a Mass tomorrow, one of Father John's Masses so that we can send it out to everybody in the parish uh, who, who really are not able to come to Mass yet or not uh, uh, feeling up to coming to Mass yet. That way they can watch uh, this Mass from, from today. As Monsignor um, Pat mentioned, I'm starting a new series on Monday morning on the Gospel of Luke and it will be conducted on Zoom, as we have been doing our Bible study for the last uh, number of, of weeks. So if you'd like to uh, register for it, uh, please go to the parish website, and then to Flock Note, and you'll see a, a link to Father Dave's Bible study. So if you register there, put your sign up, and then you'll be sure to receive the, uh, the the notice of the study and also the link to, to Zoom. So that's Monday morning, 9.30. If you happen to miss it, it's okay because it's being recorded and after the session, uh, it'll be sent, the link will be sent out to all those who have registered for, for the Bible study. Some of you may be surprised that I'm here today. Um, I'm surprised too. <laughs> I, I had planned to move this past Thursday uh, and all was set. I had my COVID-19 test and it came back negative, thank God. Uh, I, was, I was all set to go and then um, I received a call from Presentation Manor that one PSW and one resident had tested positive for, um, for COVID, which means that uh, Presentation Manor is not admitting any new residents for, for two weeks. So um, your pastor, Monsignor Pat, has um, kindly offered to put me up or to put up with me <laughs> as the case may be for the next couple of weeks. So I'm happy that my stay here has been prolonged. <laughs> Thank you. Let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such a great gift, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Let us, as is in our tradition, say our three Hail Marys, for those who may die in the coming week, that they may be received into eternal life. 
and that God may comfort their families. Hail Mary.